Many of us consider fame to be synonymous with the American dream, imagining a life full of glitz and glamour in film or sports. Sadly, though, for many celebrities, their time in stardom is short-lived. That's why it's no surprise that these 11 ex-celebrities have gone on to lead normal lives filled with everyday jobs, just like the rest of us. From television actors, movie stars, and NBA Hall of Famers, this list shows how even those considered most famous must eventually rejoin society after their star fades away. Taryn Smith Then If you're a fan of 90s TV, you must recall Taryn Noah Smith as the young and witty Mark on Home Improvement. Over his tenure in the show, he grew up right before our eyes. After it ended at age 16, Smith realistically admitted that I never had a chance to decide what I wanted to do with my life. However, he ultimately made an electrifying decision. Taryn Smith now, vegan food entrepreneur. Following his highly publicized lawsuit to gain control of the assets he had earned, Smith collaborated with vegan chef Heidi Van Pelt, who was 15 years older than him, to create Play Food, a vegan dairy farm and catering service. However, both their business venture together and marriage ultimately ended in failure. Fast forward to today, Smith resides on a sailboat off California's shoreline where he dedicates himself towards humanitarian assistance for disaster relief charities. Angelina Pivarnik Then When MTV's hit show Jersey Shore first aired, viewers were introduced to a variety of unforgettable personalities, most notably Snooki and The Situation. But no one made quite the impression as Angelina Pavarnik, also known as the Staten Island Dump, who arrived with her belongings in trash bags on the very first episode. Her explosive fights with other cast members led to early departures from both seasons one and two of Jersey Shore. So does it really come as any surprise that she wouldn't be fit for a profession requiring responsibility over others' lives? Angelina Pavarnik now EMT after a second stint on Jersey Shore, Angelina Pavarnik joined the cast of the reality series Couples Therapy for two seasons. But that's not all. She eventually became an EMT. So if you live in New York and experience a medical emergency or require assistance, it's possible that dirty little hamster from Jersey Shore could be coming to your rescue, in theory. However, with the revival of Jersey Shore Family Vacation, we can only assume this won't be happening anytime soon. Jeff Cohen then, Jeff Cohen is the perfect example of an acting one-hit wonder. In 1985, he played Chunk in The Goonies and won himself a huge fan following due to his memorable comedy performance, including the iconic Truffle Shuffle dance. It's been over three decades since then, but Cohen's dance moves are still remembered fondly by many today. Despite gaining fame as Chunk, though, Jeff chose to follow an entirely different path later on in life. Jeff Cohen now, lawyer. After the success of his role in The Goonies, Jeff Cohen left acting behind as he entered puberty. He lost weight to play high school football and then decided to become a lawyer while studying at college. A 2014 profile by the American Bar Association Journal recounted how Cohen got interested in law. Nevertheless, it was ultimately due to him being forced into an early retirement from show business after reaching adolescence. Richard Donner, the legendary film director behind The Goonies, guided Cohen in deciphering the intricacies of show business. Using Donner's introduction into Hollywood as a benefit, Cohen capitalized on this opportunity and secured summer internships at several movie studios while still attending college. I grew up loving The Three Stooges and The Marx Brothers, but suddenly I had a new crop of heroes. Driven by the success of entertainment icons such as David Geffen and Jeffrey Katzenberg, Cohen noticed that many leading agents, studio executives, producers, and managers had law degrees, an insight he took to heart. Consequently, in the year 2000, he graduated from UCLA's law school before venturing off on his own path at Beverly Hills Entertainment Law Firm. A few years later, in 2006, Cohen Gardner was launched with six lawyers providing legal representation for actors, media companies, directors, writers, producers, and production companies alike. My concerns about my clients are not merely academic, he elucidates. I've been in front of the camera. I know how hard everyone works. I treat them carefully with respect. Beyond his work as an entertainment attorney, Cohen lends his expertise to CNBC and HuffPost. 
Mara Wilson then. In the 90s, Mara Wilson was an undeniable child actress phenomenon. She kickstarted her career with memorable roles in Mrs. Doubtfire and Miracle on 34th Street, both released in 1993 and 1994, respectively. However, it wasn't until 1996 when she played Matilda that truly skyrocketed her stardom as a beloved figure to children around the world, thanks to Roald Dahl's classic novel, which also reached massive success upon its adaptation into a film. Since then, this generation of kids has come to know Matilda as not just their beloved character, but also Mara Wilson herself, who breathed life into them. After the wild success of Matilda, many assumed Wilson was going to be a Hollywood superstar. Unfortunately, her issues with Tinseltown, combined with an OCD diagnosis, pushed her away from the limelight. Mara Wilson Now Writer After stepping away from acting, Wilson enrolled at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts to pursue a career in writing. She's since penned an autobiographical one-woman show and play, as well as her own memoir. Additionally, she's contributed writings for websites and hopped on podcasts plus YouTube videos, yet appears unlikely to make a full return to Hollywood anytime soon. As Wilson expressed it, acting, film acting, is not very fun. Doing the same thing over and over again, until, in the director's eyes, you get it right, does not allow for very much creative freedom. The best times I had on film sets were the times when the director let me express myself, but those were rare. Lisa and Louise Burns Then In 2015, Lisa and Louise Burns recounted to the Daily Mail their journey of being cast as the Grady twins in Stanley Kubrick's classic horror movie, The Shining. They spoke about how they ended up playing these iconic roles that have haunted viewers for decades and still continue to be a source of terror today. Stanley was the kind of person who didn't know what he was looking for until he found it. We'd never been to stage school, but we'd done some TV work before, and so we had an agent and she called our mom and said, Stanley Kubrick is looking for sisters. Stanley was never looking for twins, but we went along anyway. If we hadn't auditioned then, the roles would probably have gone to two girls of different ages, like in the characters in the book. It certainly worked in our favor because Stanley decided twins were just spookier. During the interviews, they couldn't help but compliment Kubrick and Nicholson for their incredible work. Lisa and Louise Burns Now Lawyer and Microbiologist The Burns twins discovered that their roles in The Shining caused them to be typecast, hindering future acting opportunities. Thus, Lisa and Louise made other career choices. Lisa became a lawyer while Louise ventured into the world of microbiology as an author. Although their feature in The Shining did not launch them into movie stardom, the twins still have fond memories of their time acting. John Cassisi Then Predictably, John Cassisi's entrance into Hollywood was born from something a bit suspicious. In the mid-1970s, renowned director Alan Parker went to an elementary school in Brooklyn on hunt for children to cast in his upcoming mobster film, Bugsy Malone. To find who he needed, he asked students to point out the naughtiest kid, which eventually turned out to be none other than young Cassisi himself. Based on that suggestion, Cassisi was chosen to play the role of Fat Sam in the movie, which then opened up further opportunities for him. He landed a part on Fish, a late 70s series, and this concluded his acting career. However, it certainly wasn't the end of his life story. In fact, what followed could be best described as something out of an exciting Hollywood script. John Cassisi Now Convicted Felon Although John Cassisi had retired from acting, he wasn't finished. His ambition pushed him to ascend the ranks and become director of global construction for Citigroup in 2012. It seemed like a story with a happy ending until 2015 when Cassisi's part in an unethical bribery scheme came to light. He pled guilty, was sentenced two to six years behind bars, and forced to pay $500,000 proving that no dream is without risk or consequence. Austin St. John Then From the day it debuted in August 1993, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was an instant success, and no one from the show was as renowned as Austin St. John, who played Jason Lee Scott, leader of the Red Power Ranger team. He became a sensation during his first season and a half with the series, but had to depart due to salary disputes midway through its second season, along with two other co-stars, Walter Emanuel Jones, the Black Ranger, and Thai Trang, the Yellow Ranger. Consequently, their characters were removed from further episodes, too. 
Austin St. John now, paramedic. After departing from Power Rangers, St. John explored numerous positions, including a karate instructor. By the end of the 2000s, he exchanged his on-screen hero status to an off-screen Avenger when he committed himself as a paramedic in Washington, D.C. For over 10 years, St. John employed every effort towards saving lives and aiding healthcare within the U.S. military abroad during wartime conflicts in the Middle East region. Over the past few years, St. John has been a regular presence at comic book conventions around the world. Peter Ostrom then Peter Ostrom only has a single significant acting credit on his resume, but it's an iconic one. He played Charlie Bucket in the 1971 movie adaptation of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. On set, Ostrom was greatly admired by Gene Wilder and dialogue coach Frawley Becker. The latter even praised him years later, saying, Peter had natural talent. His ability to create believable characters without any prior experience landed him this unique part that generations of people still remember today. Peter was a child who acted. He wasn't a child actor. He had none of the obvious technique, tricks, or affections of that kind that TV kid actors had and continue to have. He was genuine, and his sincerity as a person shines through in his performance. He was an extremely intelligent kid who was both self-aware and skilled at what he was doing. Ostrom's performance in the film was widely praised, and it went on to become a beloved classic film. Nonetheless, his heart desired something else altogether. Peter Ostrom Now – Veterinarian After the immense success of Willy Wonka, Peter Ostrom rejected a three-film contract and instead opted to pursue his passion in animal care. Consequently, he obtained his doctorate of veterinary medicine from Cornell University College of Veteran Medicine in 1984 and has been employed as a vet ever since then. Although Ostrom usually declines both requests for, although Ostrom usually declines most requests for interviews or promotions, he still makes brief appearances at some anniversary events related to Wonka every now and then. Angus T. Jones, then Angus T. Jones, famously known for his role as the half-man in CBS's hit sitcom Two and a Half Men, never truly sought other acting parts after the show ended, only appearing on TV series Horace and Pete in a minor capacity. But what happened to him? From 2003 to 2015, he starred alongside Charlie Sheen, John Cryer, and eventually Ashton Kutcher throughout its successful duration. So where did this talented actor migrate to once it was over? Angus T. Jones, now event planner. Believe it or not, that is indeed Angus T. Jones all grown up. His growth was documented on Two and a Half Men as viewers witnessed his transition from child to adult, but now that the show's coming to an end, he's been able to explore a new chapter of his life. Hair Down Jones, having been the highest paid child actor on TV, likely has plenty of financial resources and appears to have decided to take a break from acting for now. He's reportedly partnered up with Justin Combs, Puff Daddy's son, in an event planning business. Will we see Jones back on our screens again? It's possible, but it seems that he's currently focused on making others shine instead. Cameron Diaz then In the late 90s and early 2000s, Cameron Diaz was one of Hollywood's most sought-after stars. She captivated audiences around the world after a starring role in The Mask alongside Jim Carrey quickly becoming a box office sensation with hits such as My Best Friend's Wedding and There's Something About Mary, not to mention taking on iconic roles like voicing Princess Fiona in Shrek or kicking butt as an angel in Charlie's Angels. However, despite all these successes, she disappeared from films by the mid-2010s. Cameron Diaz Now After its last spectacular showing in 2014, Annie, after decades in the spotlight, Cameron Diaz announced her retirement from acting to pursue a new passion, writing. She's now the proud author of two successful health books, The Body Book and The Longevity Book. With this transition away from film and television stardom, she's been able to enjoy life with greater levels of privacy than ever before. Charlie Cosmo then in the early 90s, Charlie Cosmo became a household name for playing major supporting characters in two fantasy films, Dick Tracy's The Kid and Hook's Jack Banning, Peter Pansaw. Regrettably, this peak was fleeting. Corso had only one more acting role, a minor part in Can't Hardly Wait, before departing from Hollywood permanently. Charlie Cosmo, now 
law professor. After obtaining a physics degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the year 2000, Cosmo decided to shift paths and pursue law as his career. He received his Juris Doctor degree from Yale in 2006, passed the New York State Bar exam soon after that, and briefly worked at Sullivan and Cromwell before becoming a professor at Brooklyn Law School. Nowadays, he teaches law to students attending Cleveland's prestigious Case Western Reserve University School of Law, an accomplishment fitting for someone who has achieved so much success within the field. Sean Kemp then Sean Kemp is a name that rings through the annals of basketball history. Having declared for the NBA draft directly out of high school, initially his young age led to a quiet start in the league, but it wasn't long before he established himself as an electrifying forward known affectionately as the Rain Man. He served as one of the cornerstones on which Seattle's powerful Western Conference team rose from the early 90s to late aughts. After a successful career, Kemp was plagued by weight issues and came to training camp often overweight. For the rest of his decade-long career, he moved around from team to team, ranging from Cleveland for three years, Portland for two, and lastly the Orlando Magic in the 2002-2003 season, before coming off of retirement. So what became of this once mighty basketball star after retiring? Sean Kemp now, restaurant owner. After his days in the NBA, Sean Kemp's life took a turn for the worse. He attempted to make an impressive return for several years but was derailed by two narcotics-related arrests, one of which was cocaine possession in 2005 and another misdemeanor marijuana charge in 2006. Despite the setback, he still maintained similar athleticism compared to his time as an all-star athlete. Shifting his attention back to Seattle, Kemp stands for the return of the NBA team in the city. Supersonics relocated to Oklahoma City in 2008. Unsurprisingly, he's now taken a step into the restaurant industry and owns or runs several restaurants in Seattle. Chris Owen then Do you recall the awkward but endearing Shermanator from 1999's American Pie? He was played by Chris Owen, who enjoyed a major Hollywood moment that same year, starring in not one but four films – Can't Hardly Wait, October Sky, She's All That, and of course, Pie. Unfortunately, after his success with this film, he found himself typecast as the nerdy guy. When he began declining such roles, offers stopped coming altogether. Chris Owen Now – Photographer Chris Owen once had a taste of fame in the early 2000s, however, he eventually found himself out of work with fewer job opportunities. That was until the New York Daily News uncovered him working at a sushi restaurant in 2014, something that could have been his downfall yet became his saving grace. Since then, Owens has established another career as an accomplished photographer and started to land back into acting roles on TV, Criminal Minds, and upcoming movies set for the release next year. Stephen Anthony Lawrence Then, Stephen Anthony Lawrence rose to fame as a child actor in the late 90s and early 2000s, appearing on shows like ER, Frasier, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He remains most famous for his role as Bernard Beans Orangaran in Disney Channel's Even Stevens. Despite this success, however, he found it difficult to secure roles once he grew older after Even Stevens ended in 2003. From then until 2010, only obtaining work sporadically. But what direction did this former star take? Stephen Anthony Lawrence, now acting coach. Stephen Anthony Lawrence hasn't given up on his acting career completely, as evidenced by three film projects to his name since 2015. His IMDb page also showcases that he offers acting classes for aspiring actors and actresses who are eager to learn anybody that's hungry. As further proof of this commitment to aspiring young people in their own careers, a picture of Lawrence's Instagram revealed him working as Santa Claus helper at Sun Valley Mall in California during the holidays. Clearly, Stephen is still passionate about performing, despite having taken several alternate jobs over time. Lisa Welchel, then When the facts of life ended in 1988, Lisa Welchel shifted her focus away from acting and towards a spiritual calling she would followed since childhood. After becoming a born-again Christian at only 10 years old, the star eventually married her church pastor and stepped back from Hollywood to pursue a more pious lifestyle. So what did this preppy girl who once lit up screens do after leaving Tinseltown? Lisa Welchel, now author. 
After a successful career in Hollywood, Lisa Welchel made the courageous decision to leave the limelight and dedicate her time to raising her three children. This new life path inspired Welchel to share her experiences through writing. She eventually published 10 books that touch on topics like motherhood, child rearing, adult relationships, homeschooling, and how holiday traditions can nourish one's faith. Unfortunately, in 2012, the year she reappeared on reality TV show Survivor Philippines, Welchel divorced her husband of 27 years. Eric Estrada Then Before Chips, Eric Estrada was mostly relegated to small-time roles. That all changed when he became Officer Frank Poncherello of the California Highway Patrol in NBC's immensely popular show. For six seasons and 139 episodes, audiences across the country fell in love with his character, helping make him one of Hollywood's most recognizable faces. Estrada was able to excel in his acting career, taking on roles that enabled him to stand out from other actors on this list, and he's still active today, appearing both in screen and voice acting projects. Apparently, Estrada's time riding motorcycles had an impactful effect because he launched a fascinating new profession back in 2009. Eric Estrada, now police officer. Eric Estrada captured the attention of millions with his iconic performance as a motorcycle patrolling cop in Chips. Decades later, he made headlines once again when, in 2009, he decided to take up an even more daring profession – actual law enforcement. He became a full-time deputy sheriff for Bedford County, Virginia, and eventually began serving as a reserve police officer for St. Anthony, Idaho. Today, Estrada continues performing while also managing to patrol the streets and keep them safe from criminals. Al Green, then. Al Green, born Albert Lawrence Green in the 1970s, gained immense popularity as a soul singer. He famously produced iconic songs such as Take Me to the River and his most popular song Let's Stay Together. In 1995, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for being one of the most gifted purveyors of soul music, indicating how deeply he must have connected with it. After leaving music behind him and exploring more spiritual realms post-music career, Al Green made sure that his legacy extended past just simply providing us with great tunes. Al Green now, pastor. Throughout his successful career, Al Green was simultaneously recording albums of gospel music and one such album, The Lord Will Make a Way, earned him the prestigious Grammy Award. However, it wasn't until he experienced personal tragedy in 1974 that drove him to become a pastor. In the heartbreaking episode, Green had been romantically involved with an already married woman who desperately wanted to marry him, but her plea fell on deaf ears. She became enraged and tragically ended her life using Al's 38 handgun as an instrument for despair. When this incident occurred, Green saw it as a reminder to pursue his purpose in life and eventually became an ordained pastor of the full gospel tabernacle. Nowadays, he's widely known as simply Reverend Al Green. Jeffrey Owens, then. In 1985, Jeffrey Owens achieved his initial major achievement in Hollywood with a bang. He was cast as Dr. Elvin Thibodeau on the popular The Cosby Show series for NBC. For seven seasons and 44 episodes, Owen stayed on the show, leading him to even more opportunities afterwards. Despite never having had another huge project like The Cosby Show again, Owen's royalties from it kept his career alive until Bill Cosby's demise tarnished everything associated with him. Jeffrey Owens Now Bagging Groceries temporarily. Jeffrey Owens continued to act after The Cosby Show, but when the show was pulled from air due to Bill Cosby's numerous sexual misconduct allegations in 2018, his royalty earnings ceased. While working at a Trader Joe's in New Jersey soon afterwards, he unfortunately became subject to job shaming. Nevertheless, this narrative had an uplifting ending. Hundreds of actors voiced their support for him finding honest work, and then job offers became flooding back into his life. Ever since the social media job-shaming incident occurred, Owens has landed more esteemed gigs than ever before.